can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? Oak House Church brings to you the word of life, which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. Let my word 
Belendiriano, Savonadien, Ye can Belendian, Sifinema Maya, Mominidia Sombria Mine, Otto Belenibria, Savenino, Belehama, Belendria Sovain, Ontelebria, Belenies, Hamadel, Vinisom. Follow you. 
Call on you, 
Holy Spirit, we honor you. We welcome you in our midst. You are the spirit of prayer. You are the spirit of supplication. We ask, O oh God, that you rest upon us tonight. The spirit of grace and supplication. 
let it rest upon the congregation tonight strengthen us oh god tonight that we may pray you said in your word that men ought always to pray and not to faint we have come to seek your face we have come to pray tonight we cannot pray unless you help us we rely on you holy spirit we cannot pray unless you help us that is why we ask that you pick in our mortal bodies quicken us tonight to pray we rely on you we yield on you spirit of the living god we ask that you pour out the spirit of grace and supplication that we may pray tonight strengthen us with might in our inner man according to the riches of your glory we thank you jesus we honor you in this place we come by the blood of jesus the blood that speaks of better things than the blood of Abel. We are sent tonight in the spirit by the blood of Jesus. We come by the blood of sprinkling. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We honor you tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We are going to be praying tonight. It is a night of brooding where we allow the Holy Spirit to brood upon us, where we lie down on our faces and cry unto the Lord to brood upon us, to do that work. We permit him, we give him the permission, we give him the free will to walk on us. Amen. Amen. There were things that pastor began to share with us yesterday. Talking about spiritual discernment. That is understanding the times that we are living in. It is very, very crucial. It is very, very important that we understand the time that we are into that we understand the season, what God wants us to be doing in this time, in this period, in this season. So he began to show us from the scriptures, if you can help me project Amos 3.7. Amos 3.7. The Bible says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophet. Meaning that there is nothing that God will do except he reveals it to his, his prophet. God speaks to his prophet. When he speaks to his prophet, his prophet now communicates the mind of God to the people. Now the church begin to implement what the program of God is, what the agenda of God is for the time that we are into. And God has spoken through not one, not, not once, not twice, but has spoken through the mouth of his prophet about the time that we are into about the season that we are into this is a season of darkness darkness is coming but we are assured that the darker it gets the brighter it becomes for the children of god and the glory of god will come upon us in these last days. If you can project Isaiah 60 to buttress that point. Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60. Isaiah chapter 60. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. 
there are so many things that will be happening in these days, in these last days. There are so many things that will be happening. As Satan is busy recruiting the people that he's going to use to wage warfare in these last days, God is also recruiting the people that he is going to use in these last days to wage that warfare. And he cannot do this except something happens in us. Something must give way for that glory to rest upon us. Something definitely must give way. Because if the glory rests upon us in our state, in our crude state, without God refining us, without us passing through that fire of refinement, that glory would destroy us. So that is why the message of the now, as we have heard over and over again, is the message of sanctification and the message of righteousness. Let's quickly look at uh, the book of... Let's look at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah 40 verse 3. Isaiah 40 verse 3. The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Verse 4. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain. Verse 5. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord had spoken it. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Now before the glory of the Lord will be revealed, something must happen. The glory of the Lord cannot be revealed. It cannot rest upon you except something happens to you. Something must happen to you for that glory to rest upon you. If not, if the glory should rest upon you in your state, in the state which you are in right now, it will destroy you. Just like we saw in the Acts, in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 5, talking about Ananias and Sapphira. The Bible tells us that they were struck dead, both husband and wife. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was in the house. So that is the glory of the Lord. It cannot rest on a vessel that is not pure. It cannot rest on a vessel that is not sanctified. It cannot rest on a vessel that is not purified. So if you want to see the glory of God upon your life, there are things that you must do. There are things that you must, that must give way in your life. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah 40 that we just read from verse 3. It talks about every valley being filled and every mountain and hill being made low and every crooked path straightened. Now, crooked path talks about dishonesty. Mountain talks about pride. There are things in our life that hinders or that obscures the glory of God. The Bible tells us that we have this treasure in an earthen vessel. It cannot manifest because it is trapped, it is caged. It is until these things begin to give way. It is until they begin to give way that we see the glory of God visible in our life. And we are the ones that will carry this glory. We are the ones. No other people. God is not going to raise the prophets of the old. He's not going to raise them back to life. We, you and I, 
we are the ones that are going to carry this glory. We are the ones that are going to manifest the gift of the spirit, the powers of the age to come. You and I. But it cannot happen except we are sanctified. Except we are purified. Something must give way. Let's look at 2 Timothy 2.20. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. It says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. You cannot be fit for the master's use. God cannot use you in these last days in your state. You must be sanctified. You must be purified before God can use you. Let's look at Proverbs 25 verse 4. Proverbs 25 4. Proverbs 25. The Bible says, Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. We are all vessels. We are all vessels. But you need to ask yourself Am I a vessel that God can use? Am I a vessel that God can use? Can God use you in these last days? Can you be a recruit in these last days? So the message for the now is the message of sanctification. Is the message of righteousness. So that is why we are going to be praying our first prayer prayer point will be for the Lord to sit on us. For the Lord to refine us. The Bible says in the book of Malachi 3 that he is a refiner's fire. That he will sit on us and he will purge us as of gold and as of silver. So we are going to pray and ask the Lord, oh God, take away pride from me. Pride represents the mountain and the hill. Remember he says that every mountain and every hill shall be brought low. You ask him, oh God, take away malice. Take away unforgiveness. Take away guile. Take away hypocrisy. These things, they hinder the glory of the Lord from shining forth. So we are going to be crying out to the Lord tonight and ask the Lord, oh God, sit upon me, sit upon me, that I may offer an offering in righteousness. Go ahead and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Le bobo bo kapare de Maria da shala baria da kahaya ba re de kaya da ba Maria de kahaya ba shala baria da kahaya ba ask him to sit on you male kaparia da kahaya ba re de kaya baria da kahaya ba you cannot carry the glory you cannot be a vessel that God can use if you are not sanctified that is the message of the now male kaparia da kahaya ba ask the Lord oh God Oh, sit on me, brood upon me, male kapariada kahayaba. Take away pride, oh God. Take away hypocrisy, male kapariada kahayaba. That I may be an offering in righteousness, male kapariada kahayaba. Sit upon me, oh God. Take away the dross, oh God. Take away the impurities, oh God. Burn it away, burn it away, male kapariada marede ka. Kahayaba, marada ba kahayaba, riada kahayaba, redede shalaba riada kahayaba. Cry out to him, male kapariada kaha. Oh, 
holy fire holy fire holy fire holy fire fall upon us fall upon us holy fire Hey! 
Burn within us, burn within 
Hallelujah. Glory be to your name. Glory to your name. In Jesus' name. Let me tell you the reason why God will be justified. You know what it means to be justified? God will be right and righteous in sending any man to hell. Let me tell you the reason why. He will send you or I to hell. And he will be right in doing that. He will not be wrong in doing it. If I get that boy, if he see that boy that is walking up and down, if I get you there, I'm going to deal with you by myself. Be careful. Everybody, just keep quiet. If you are not ready, you go home. If you come here, come here. Let us do. I want to see lives of men. When I read the Bible, when I read all this thing and all of that, I look at what I look at my life. I look at what is going on. I wonder: Is it that God is? Is it that this thing is not working? Are we here to just be playing religion and all of that, and then for put on the cloak of of uh, religion that you are a Christian, that you are what? Is that what it's supposed to be? Is it that God is, does not have the ability to change lives of men? When I read the Bible, when I turn the pages of the Bible, I see the things that happen in the life of men and women. I look at our present time and generation. Is it that there is no God anymore? Or is it that those things they told us, just like Gideon cried out? He said, where are those miracles that our forefathers told us about? What's going on? The problem is us. Do you know the reason why God will be justified to send any man, whether you are born again filled with the Holy Ghost, he will send you to hell. 
And you're not, you don't know that you're not afraid. Whether you're a little, little girl, little boys and children, children of five years or four years, they go to hell. Go read your Bible well. This thing that God is doing is not a child's play. It's not a, it's not a, we're not here to play games. And there are some of us here who are here, they think that it is, um, I don't know, because we are still carrying all those garbages and stuff like that that we carried from the world. And we come to church and we balance in the church like that. And we are not doing anything about changing our lives. The reason why God has a right to send you to hell and he will still be right and correct is because his son the only son, he doesn't, have, he doesn't have two. The only one that he had, Jesus Christ. He brought him out. He said because mankind was lost in sin, and the soul that sin must surely die, he will punish sin. Anywhere God sees sin, he will punish it. God is holy. Any, any dot, no matter what, any, any dot, the Bible says he dwells in the light unto which no man can see, no approach. You can't come to God with any spot in your life. You know what is immaculate white? You know when he says white is immaculate? It has no dot or spot in it. Even one little tiny lie. You can't, you can't have it and come before. It is not possible. Whether you are a, a, a toddler, whether you are grown up, or whether you are a middle age, no matter who you are, you can't come to God with any spot in your life. Not to talk about when you are, you are talking, except you are not interested in going to heaven. Except you are not interested in, in living in the presence of Jesus Christ. If you are not interested, then we are not in the same business. Then you can go home and continue your life the way you are. But if you are interested, then you have to listen. Because of who God is, he's clean and pure, righteousness, purity, holiness unto him. He took his son. And he brought the consequences of the sins of mankind and put it on him. And on the cross... He was made sin. It was on that cross he was made sin. He took that on him. They punished him for your sake and for my sake. And God abandoned him. And he turned and cried out for the first time in his entire life. My father, my father, what have I done to deserve this? God didn't answer him. The consequences of our sin was put on him. A soul that sinned, you shall surely die, must be punished. He punished him because of you and I. That man died. He went to hell. When we talk about hell, you don't know what hell is. When we talk about hell, you think hell is a place where, a, a dark place. A, a hell is a place of the incorrigible. The place where evil, wickedness are. If you see, you know, you know we don't fear. When you, see, when you see death, when you get to hell, when you see Satan in his fullness, he held him in captivity. Three days and three nights. The Bible said that what he went through, no word, no amount of, no matter how, even if you're the best orator in the whole world, your words will not be able to, to describe the kind of horror that he went through. That's why the songwriter said, I may never know how much it costs to see my sins on the cross judged. You will never know what he went through. You will never know the agony, the pain. That's why if you see Jesus Christ now, with, considering what is going on in the body of Christ and in the church, you see his heart is he's, he, he's bleeding, he's crying, he's weeping. 
And we are so comfortable and continue with our life as if to say everything is a slap on the, on the face of redemption. That what he did was nonsense. As if to say, if you are told to go and do it, you will do it. You know, you don't have what it takes. I don't have it. Somebody did this thing for us. Somebody paid the price. Now, see, you can have anger problem in your life. You can have unforgiveness in your life. You can be a liar. You can be a hypocrite. You can be a fornicator, an adulterer. You can be a thief, you can be a criminal, you can be an armed robber, you can be anything you want to be. You can be, you can be a, a, a champion in keeping malice and in all those whatever. You know, be champion in lies and, uh, and you have struggled with it over the years. Is it possible for you to break loose of it and become clean and holy? The answer is yes! You can live without sin. You can. It's a possibility. You can live without telling a lie. You can live without stealing. You can live without cutting corners. You can live without committing fornication and adultery and all of that. You can. You can love your wife the way God says you should love your wife. You can submit to your husband the way God says you should do it. You can. I'll tell you the reason why you can't. Get me back to that uh, Malachi 3.3. 3. Everything that you need to do it is being made available. It's been paid, given to you. The person that can do that job there is one man that can do that job. There's one personality that can do that job. He will do that surgery in your life. He will go to the deepest part of your life, that your soul, that your spirit and all of that. He will do, go there. He will do that, that, that walk. He will walk it. The person, the name of that person is the Holy Spirit. That is his job in your life. Whatever that is causing this creation or confusion and all of that, stop it. Give it. I want your 100% attention. If a fan is disturbing you, put off the fan. I don't want all this side talk and all of that. Give attention and hear what we are saying. Because we don't hear at all. It grieves my heart. It grieves my heart when I see over the years, somebody is born again. Five years later, ten years later, a Christian is still worse than what he used to be before. Can we do something about it? Can we think for a while? That's why you came here this night. So that God will brood on day. When we say brooding on you, is the Holy Spirit. Is that refiner's fire. Is the refiner. He's the one that refines life. He goes to your soul, to your spirit. He does that work. He recreates you. He cut off whatever it is that is a problem between you and God. That's why you have him inside of you. That's why he said we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. What is he doing inside? You are the temple carrying the Holy Ghost. He's living inside of you. It's not just a song. There is a personality. This refiner, this guy that I call refiner, he's inside your soul. What he came here to do is to refine you. But you must know what you need to do for him to do it. Because a lot of us have quenched him in our heart. The Holy Ghost is in your heart, but he's quenched. That's why the Bible said, do not give him and do not quench the Holy Ghost. You quench him and he's not working and you don't care. We don't care. The greatest gift, God, the, when God gave you, when God gave us the Holy Jesus Christ, he gave us everything. When he gave us the Holy Spirit, he gave us himself. God came and lived inside of you. He's living inside of you. 
But we don't care at all. We don't care at all. We are not bothered. So the work that he came to do, he's not doing it. He's not doing it. He folds his hand, but he's inside, but he folds his hand. He's not doing that work. Why is he not doing it? Because you don't want him to do it. He's not like the devil. The devil, whether you want him to do it or not, well, of course you know what he will do. He will force you. He will kill you. He will maim you. He will disgrace you. But the Holy Spirit is a gentle Holy Spirit. He comes inside your heart. He doesn't do anything except you give him that permission to do it. That's why he is gentle. If he's going to do it, number one, you must now, if you see the reason why you are, he's going to start that walk, why he will start that walk in you of making you look like Jesus Christ. Look at what he's going to, look at what will make him start it. It is by your faith. You now take your mind. You take this your mind. You go to the cross. When we talk about the cross, I'm not talking about that wooden thing. That's not what, that's not, that's not, that thing is not, but that's not what we're talking about. When we talk about the cross, you remember what he did on the cross. It was on the cross that he punished you. It is on the cross that your sins were judged. He paid that price on the cross. When you put your faith on that atonement that he did, in your heart you believe it, with the heart man believes. And with the mouth confession is made. You put your trust on that thing that he did on the cross of Calvary. You put your mind on it. You focus on it. You reflect on it. You acknowledge that yes, he did it for me on the cross of Calvary. When you put your faith in that thing, when you confess it with your mouth, when you believe it in your heart and you confess it consciously, consensuously, when you say that, when you believe that, when your mind is focused on that, then and then, he will swing into action. He will start his work. And when he, the work he does, he doesn't do a surface work. He goes deep down. He will root it out. You know what Jesus, God said to Jeremiah? I have ordained you a prophet unto nation to root out. That's what God does. He's not just to go and cut it. He's not going to cut it. Because if he cuts it, it will regrow again. He will go, he will root, uproot it from the root completely. So that he will not struggle over it. That is why he said that sin shall not have dominion over you. And what you do is that, you know, eh, then you, when you do that, the Holy Spirit now comes in to start that work. Then he goes to the area because he knows what is in your heart more than you do. He knows you more than yourself. He goes to your heart. He goes to that place where you have that malice. That tree that is called malice you have planted over the years, he will start uprooting it. When he uproots it in your life, you will know. You will be crying. You will know he uproots it. Uproot unforgiveness. There are so many things to uproot. He will go and uproot unforgiveness in your heart. You will go and uproot malice in your heart. He will go and uproot immorality in your heart. He will go and uproot adultery in your heart. He will go and uproot stealing, lies, hypocrisies. He will be uprooting them. When he uproots it, he removes it. And know why he is doing that. You keep on focusing on that cross. You remember that is where that thing was done. 
if you set your mind on that, you give him the access to do that work. You continue on that trail. After one month, two months later, three months later, all of a sudden you discover that I no longer lie. It will just live your life. If peradventure for whatever reason you tell lies, it will hit you immediately because it's now strange to you. When you lie, it is no longer you. you when you tell lies, it will hit you immediately. You will react. But when you lie and you are normal, it means it has not been uprooted. Hello, because Jesus Christ is coming to take you back to himself. Without any of these things in your life, he can't. When he comes to take you and he sees it, he will drop you. The reason is because God has paid the price, the consequences of your sin and all of that. He gave Jesus Christ to take your sin upon himself. He punished him so that you can now, he will now have the right to declare you guiltless. And then give the Holy Ghost to begin that work. Everything that pertains to life and godliness, he has made them available. If you don't want to take advantage of it, you will never blame God for it. And he will be right enough to take you and send you to hell. You cannot live with him in eternity. So that when you take these things away, your heart is clean and all of that, you can now see the salvation of God. You can now see the beauty of God. You can now see the glory of God. You can now see the goodness of God in your life. God is so forth. He will show forth in your life. When somebody sees you, they will know that you are the seed that God has blessed. There is no two ways about it. When a man sees you, he will know that this man is the man that God has worked on. You see the beauty of your life. You see the glory of God in your life. You see the goodness of God. You see the mercies of God in your life. It's a beauty to behold when you see a vessel like that. If not, we will keep on doing this in over and over. Over and over, year in, year out. And we are playing religion. And we are doing whatever. You don't, even when you, that is why, you see, you see me, you see me. You see, eh? you may not like me, and I don't care whether you like me or not. I didn't come here for anybody to like me. One thing I am interested in is that if God likes me, I am done. If God likes me, if God accepts me and all of that, I am fine. You can go back at your whatever, say what you want to say. That's your business. When you finish, you stay in your heart. You can't come to me and tell me that. I'm interested in pleasing God. I'm interested to be in the God's good book. And because God is holy and righteous and all of that, you can't play game with him. You can't play game with God. You can't. There is nothing you are going through in this life that it, don't, it has not provided the solution. Nothing. No challenge you say you are going through that he has not provided. Nothing you are struggling in this life you say he has not provided the solution. The problem is you and I. Never God. So what we do is that we just sit down looking at who is, who is going to tell you what you want to hear. You live in the flesh. You, you, you gratify the flesh. You swim in the flesh. When they touch that place, you react. When anybody goes there, when that place is touched, you react. You don't want anybody to go there. Uh-uh. No, I will go there. If you don't want me to come there, leave, because I will. Because it is my job as a pastor to bring the word of God to you, to tell you the truth. 
If you don't want to hear the truth, thank God you can go. I am not a great man of God. I am not a big man of God. I am not, I am not, I don't, I don't, I don't even want anybody to know me. I don't even, what I just want God to know me. If God knows me, I'm fine. Let the truth be, be told. You know, we have children, he say, because they are children and all of that. He, that, is, that is why, that is, you know where we have gotten to now. You are, you are coming to church now, the first thing that your the children is to buy biscuit and the ribina and the popcorn and all of that, and then scatter it everywhere, and they sit down. That's where you are. That's what you, you call, there is no change in life. They lie, they see. They commit fornication, those children. They sleep with one another, eight and your, at your, your back. We don't allow the Holy Ghost to do his work in our life. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how bad your life. We're not interested in how bad your life is. What we're interested in is, are you ready to expose yourself to him? Undress for circumcision that comes from him so that he can refine you. You can make yourself open. You know why we are not changing? Because we, we, are, we, are, we are full of self. On the surface like this, you come out on the surface, you want to give the impression that you are clean, you are holy, you are fine, you are righteous, you are all that on the surface. That's the facade. But deep inside, canker worms. Jesus called them white sepulchers, full of dead and evil, unclean things inside. On the outside, the house is so neat, so fine, so beautiful. When you enter there, you close your mouth, your ears, your nose, because it stinks inside. And that is where the Holy Ghost is living. That's where the Holy Ghost is living. Are you not wicked? Are you not wicked to the highest order? That somebody is living inside of you. And that house where he's living is, you leave it unclean. And that is how in the physical, if somebody you come to your house, everywhere is scattered, is up, upside down. You don't know where, before you enter the, there was one day I came went to somebody's house. You will be doing like this. This is how you do. Somebody's house. Dirty. It will show you how the person's heart is. The person's heart is thinking, is smelling. I don't need the Holy Ghost. I don't need Holy Ghost to tell me how your, the state of your heart is. You just look at the environment. Because if you're clean inside, it will reflect, it will show in the environment where you live. If you're clean, if your heart is clean, it's equivalent when you come to your heart. That is why if you want to see how clean the church is, because the Bible said that we are the light of the world. We are the light. We are not the darkness. So if you want to know how clean the church is, look at the environment, look at the society. Look at what is happening in our own country, Nigeria, our beloved country, Nigeria. Look at what is going on. It's to show you the state of the church. It's to show you the state of our heart. We are the light. That is why he said, if the light that is supposed to bring light is dark, how great is the darkness? And we call ourselves Christians and we brag we are Christians. We are born again. Look at what is going on in the church, in the society. Look at what is going on in the society. What are we going to do? If God is God, then let him be God. You know one decision that I made in my life? See, I went to school. I got admission to study veterinary medicine, six years course. I graduated, I came out with my certificate to practice as a vet surgeon. And 
I said to myself two things. I said, Fred, these things are mutually exclusive. If you want to do your practice your veterinary profession, then go and practice it. And then take up your title, Dr. Fred, the vet doctor. And then you practice it and go. There is no problem. But if I choose to be a pastor, if I choose to be a pastor, then I should be a pastor. Indeed. If I want to be a veterinary doctor, I'm supposed to be a veterinary doctor. Indeed. I can combine the two. I can't. So I made up my mind, just like I read about Joshua. He said, today I made a declaration. I and my family, we will serve Jesus Christ. We will serve the Lord. Make up your mind what you want. Stop play, playing religion. It doesn't offer you anything. Haven't you suffered enough? Sometimes I wonder, I'm, I am, I sometimes, sometimes I'll get on my knees, I'll just be, I won't be able to pray, I'll just be crying. I'll cry and cry and cry out my heart, there will be nobody to pacify to say, you sorry, stop. Why am I crying? I read E.W.K., e. you know what he said? He said the greatest tragedy of our time, the greatest tragedy of our time is that men who are born again, they are carrying the presence of Jesus Christ in their heart, are living and walking like men, men. He's talking about you and I. Just do lip service. We are not interested to find out what it takes to get the job done in our life so that our life can be blessed, so that you can be a blessing to your generation. I want to, I want to, I want to serve God. I want to serve him in truth. I want to serve him in spirit. For God is seeking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Not pretending. I don't know the road to the hospital. I don't know what they do in the hospital. I don't know what they do in the police station. I don't have business with the police. I don't have business with the hospital. I don't work because what will take me to the hospital is it not Satan that will afflict me? And then I will go to the hospital and then pay them bill and take a bed there and all of that. I don't do that. If you walk for with God, if you stay with him, he said he that had this hope. If he, he said, he said, anyone that keep himself, you walk with God. He said the wicked one will not touch you. The things he sent to the children of Israel, he will not come near your dwelling. The prosperity that you are crack, cracking your head and lying, you will lie and you will lie. Mrs. Lolade. Are they here? The person I talk to you, I talk with you, are they here? Tell them to stand up. Point them, point their name, purpose. Tell them to stand up. Stand up, stand up to your feet. You see? Where is Muji? Where are those boys? Those boys that we are giving, you are trying to get money to get pay their school fees. He said they want to money school fees. Where are they? Pastor Aki, that text that was sent, they are the one that sent that text. 
That's why when you send me the whatever, I kept quiet. They are the ones that send the text. Stand up to your feet. I'm telling you, stand up. Where are, the, where are your group? You see you. You see you and your group. I will break. You see this your leg. I will break it. I will break it and send you back to your home. You think anybody owes you? Criminal minded set of people. I tell you, I've told you what I'm going to do in this church. If you don't like, I want you to leave. I want you to go. Go to back, go to another church. He said, you can't. Except I don't see you. Except I have not seen you with my eyes or hear it. I will come after, no matter who you are. I did, if it is my wife, I will do it. I am standing on the pulpit here. I am telling you. I'm very deadly when it comes to God and the things. I have seen where we are going to. I have seen what is coming ahead. I have seen what is coming ahead. It is not going to be a light thing. If you want to be a Christian, be a Christian. If you don't want to be a Christian, be a devil and serve the devil completely and totally so that it will be clear. And those of you wives that don't respect and honor your husband and all of that, be careful. And those of you husbands that are maltreating your husband and you call yourself a Christian, be careful. It's not a joking matter. If you want to serve God, you serve God. If you don't want to serve God, then go. You will not like what I am doing now. You won't like it. But after a period of time, you, you will come and thank me. You will come and thank me. You will be abusing me in your heart now. I will forgive you. But later, I know you are going to come back to me. I say, Pastor, I want to see you. You will kneel down and be rolling on the ground and thanking me for what I said and did. I will see those boys one-on-one. On one. I will deal with them. They will never escape it. I will deal, my rot, I will bring my rot on them. Oh, deception. You think we are here to be, you think we are, I don't know what you think we are doing here. I am not those one of those pastors, so I am not. I am not perfect. I am not holier than I am and all of that. But if you see me, you have seen me. I don't have any secret. I don't have anything behind me. As you have seen me so, all the, weak, all the weaknesses and all of that you see, you, you see it, you can see it in me. I'm not saying that I am clean, man, but I'm, I come clean before. I am open. I'm transparent. I've told you before, and I want to say it again. When you find out that I'm having issues with my wife, you have the 100% right. Confront me, tell me to step down. Come down from a being a pastor. Because I don't have any business being a pastor here. When I'm, I, I can't take care of my family and my wife and all of that. When I'm quarreling and fighting with my wife and all, I don't have any business with the pulpit. Get out from the pulpit. Because this place is holy. Including me that is talking, I am not exempted. We must return the fear of God to the church again. We must bring back the fear of God. Yeah, everything goes. You lie to people and you continue like that. And you're a Christian. And then you go and kneel down and you are praying. And you are keeping malice with your husband. And you go and kneel down and you are praying. And you are keeping malice with your wife. And you kneel down and you are praying. Praying to who? Which God? Praying to which God? To who? Can't you read the Bible? Don't you have the manual? Is it, haven't you read it in the book of Matthew? He said, if you are coming to the altar to give a gift and you find out that somebody has something against you, what did he say you should do? You have come to the altar. Altar. You didn't say, okay, let me just drop it. Let me just drop it. And go. He said, no, don't drop it. He said, go back. Before you return. 
Even if you travel from Cameroon and come here and you find out here that somebody has, a, he said, take that gift and go back to Cameroon. From the altar here, from the altar standing here, he said, take it, go back to Cameroon, return to Cameroon and reconcile with the person and then you can come back here. That is God for you. The word of God is no longer, is relative. Whether it is, whether I may forget about it, then you move on. The story building that collapsed. Officially, what was approved, the structure that was designed for that building is 15 stories. Design. Then, the corruption that is embedded in the life of man, the, in us. Because of one apartment, three bedroom flat in that is sold for Five billion. When they say, I say, it's one point two million dollars is how many? One point yeah, to one point two million dollars. Multiply by how much is a dollar? Multiply it, how much is a three bedroom flat? On that whatever he has, swimming pool, he has all kinds of things and all of that. Instead of fifteen story, they made it. They added an extra seven or six. Extra six stories. What is supposed to carry 15 now is carrying 21. It's only in Nigeria. It's only in Nigeria it will happen. The government are they not aware? They are aware. They are the ones. That's why they are not saying anything. However, don't begin to, don't say, hey, hey, hey. don't start. Don't just start. Just keep quiet. Too. Hold yourself. Respect yourself. You know why it is like that? Because we are the one. The fault is the church. We are the church is supposed to be blamed for that thing that happened. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. The light of the world, the salt of the earth. If the salt has lost its savour, how shall it salt it? How shall it be salted? If the light has lost its ability to shine, how great is the darkness? You are saying, hey, hey, hey. Hey, somebody is pastoring him. He's a pastor. Somebody is pastoring him. Somebody, the pastor is the one that sent him. He said, God told me, come to Nigeria and then do it. How did we get here? How did we get to this point? How did we get to this point? How did we start? How did we manage to get to where we are today? The state of the church today. Is this kind of a thing that we do? These little, little foxes. The Bible says in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Solomon 5.2, it says the little foxes. Little. That's how we start. How did Judas get to where he was? How did Judas is carry out? How did he get to that point? Little by little. Little by little. Little lies. He told little lies. Nothing happened. Uh -uh. He told another lie. Nothing happened. He told another one. Nothing happened. He told another one. Nothing happened. He became bold. Then he, began, he increased the lies. He stole. Five naira, nobody noticed, and nobody said anything. He stole again. He will go there and be pilfering and be taking it little by little. He's telling all those lies. Nobody noticed. No, he wasn't noticed. And so after some time, he became bold, bolder to do, to take it to the next level. That's what was going on. That's how we got to where. That's how it starts. Nobody wakes up today and says, I'm going to be an arm robber. Then you carry machine gun and start on the road. You can't do it. He starts little by little.
That is why I'm of the opinion and I believe it. If I want to serve God, let me serve God. If I don't want to serve God, let me not serve God. Because my number is available and all of that. Somebody has the audacity to send me text that our pastor is stealing money from, from welfare money that was said. That's what those people say. I pick up the phone to call the guy that sent me the text. He didn't, he didn't pick my call. I called back again. He didn't pick. He switched it off. That your phone, you will never. That, that phone, you will never have phone for the rest of your life. Watch me. In, I'm going to use somebody as an example in this, so that you know that we are serious about what we are doing. You know, until somebody is, until somebody drops dead. You know what happened to Safiria and Aeneas? You know what happened? Until that happens, no, they will not fear. They will think it's business as usual. You will break your neck. So that you have a fear. You know that God is God. You say you will do something, you will not do it. Don't come to church and be playing this kind of game. That is why, because if we stay on this pulpit and we pretend, go and see the writing to the seven churches. Why did Jesus Christ be found in front? He said because you condone it. You, con you know that these things are going on. You keep quiet. You, you, you treat it with soft hand. You sweep it under the carpet. You pretend. You look on the other side. If you are not afraid, I am. You know why I am afraid? One day I'm going to stop breathing. I'll keep saying it. I'm going to stand face to face with Jesus Christ. When I stand face to face with him, what excuse? All those my, 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 my crooked, what, is that what I'm going to bring before him? And then use my whatever to defend myself. There's no, what are you going to defend? You, you will win a case before him. I don't want to go to hell. You know why I'm doing this? Ma, don't strive to be a pastor. You know some of us, we say you want, to be, you want to be anointed as a pastor. You want to be a pastor. You want to be a deacon. You want to be a deacon. And you are struggling. You want to. You don't want to. Don't, don't fight. Don't do. I, if, you, if I were you, I would say no. Let me remain the way I am. You know why? Because you are not going to be asking, answering for yourself alone. All the blood of all these ones, you are going to give an answer to them. You are going to answer to them. You believe it, you don't believe it. You know about it, you don't know about it. You are going to give an answer. When the time comes, read your Bible. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot from the law will fall to the ground until they are accomplished. Maybe that man is lying. Maybe Jesus is lying. Maybe he's pretending. But if he's not lying and he's not pretending, then be careful. Come and lie and play pranks and get away with it. Not with me, oh. I'm fighting for the, the, the fight of my life. If I come, you know what I want us to do? To fall on your face. If you want to fall on your seat, you fall. If you want to fall on your chair, you fall. Be real. Be genuine. It's, it's not a question of, God, forgive me my sins. No, because when you committed those sins, you didn't commit it as a whole. You didn't commit it all at the same. It's one by one, is it not? Is it not one by one you did it? So you go. 
I found out I am a liar. I keep lying and lying and lying. Lord, I found out that I'm always gossiping. And this is a problem. And I know you can't take it, Lord. We need to deal with it. I know I found out that I can, when I look at a man, I, 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 I undress that man in my heart. When I look at a woman, I undress the woman in my heart. Nobody is seeing it. He's there. You committed all those sins one by one. That's why we say when you come before God for brooding, you're on your face. You are asking him, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I was driving the other day. I don't know what happened. Some, the guy was blocking the road. I blew horn. I said, get out. The guy came down and gave it to me and gave it to me and gave it to me. Inside of me, I opened the door. I came out. I remember that I'm a pastor. I entered. I drove off. When I got home, I wasn't fine. I felt like dying. Why will I even? It means that I'm not yet dead at all, at all. I am still alive. Because what I would have done when he did that, I would have said, sorry, I'm sorry. And enter the car. That's what I should have done. But I didn't do it. It means I'm still alive. Flesh. Full of it. But I went home. I wasn't happy. I was grieving my spirit. I went on my knees. I said, Lord, you see the reason. Help me. That's what God is looking for. He will keep cleaning you up. You keep working on yourself. You keep working on yourself. You allow him to keep doing that job. Not the one he will give you one, you give him ten. And when you give him ten and all of that, you finish, you enter your car, and then, yeah. You are proud. You are a dead man. You are, you are, you are, you are not it at all. You are a disgrace. A disgrace to the body of Christ. A disgrace to heaven. A disgrace to God. A disgrace to Jesus Christ. That's why he said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mourn for what? <clears throat> mourn because you lost your father. You mourn because that's not what he's talking about. We are not interested in all those ones. A young man came and said, let me go and bury him. He said, let the dead bury, the, bury their dead. Why didn't he tell him to go and mourn his father? The mourning he's talking about is when you sin against God, you go and mourn. When you break God's law, you go and mourn. Not to sit down and keep justifying yourself. Because the moment you begin to justify yourself, the moment you begin to defend yourself, you are not anywhere at all. That's the a, a evidence of a fallen man. Adam, why did you go and eat the fruit I told you not to eat? Lord, it's the woman that you gave me that cost it. That's man for you. He reasons. To defend and justify yourself. And when they tell you that what you did is wrong, you frown. You get angry. You start keeping malice. You will not talk to the person again. If you see the person coming here, you could follow the other way. You will go to hell. You will roast in hell. 
And while you are here on earth, that is why nothing works for Because the presence of the Holy Ghost cannot work. The Holy Spirit cannot work in your life. The grace of God cannot function in your life. The goodness of God cannot function. All you are going to be getting, there are crumbs that fall from the master. Say, That's what you're going to be picking. Your life will be dry. Why on this earth? Not to talk about when we get to heaven. We better tell ourselves the truth. You know what I'm doing now? I didn't plan it. It is not in my agenda at all. God is saying, go prepare, get the people ready. <laughs> hey, I know we don't hear. He said, go get the people ready. You will know whether I am a pastor sent by God or whether I sent myself or whether I am speaking for myself. You will find out in a couple of months and few years to come. You will know. Maybe you will still be here with us. Maybe you, are, you would have been angry and then move on. And you, you want to go, you go. If you want to stay, you stay. Don't have one leg here. Have one leg somewhere there. Let both of your legs be here or both of your legs be out there. Open up your heart. This one, when they say pray, pray. Stop looking around. Stop talking to one another. Stop giggling. What we are talking about is, is a matter of life and death. Something that is going, it's just like somebody who carries gun. is loaded with bullets and you put your hand on the trigger and all of that and be playing with it. It's just like giving a little child, a little kid, a gun, we loaded, and he put his hand on the on the on the trigger and be pointing. He said, "Daddy, daddy, daddy," and you are, you'll be laughing with him. Hey, my son, my son, my son, and he said, "Daddy, daddy, daddy, I will shoot, oh, daddy, I will shoot." Oh. He said, "My son, don't shoot, oh, my son, don't shoot." Oh. You know what will happen? You are playing with life and death. The moment he touched that trigger, boom, the bullet goes. He hit and death comes. That's what we are playing with. The church is not a place where you come and feel good. No! It's a dry cleaning outfit. You know when you are dry cleaning a by material and all of that, that material you are dry cleaning is not finding it funny at all. Because you are putting detergent and all of that, those chemicals are working on those materials. It's not sweet to the body. It's going to squeeze it. To squeeze out the death. That's what the church is like. The church is like a hospital. You don't go to a hospital and be laughing. You don't throw part in the hospital. You are sick men. You have surgery and the doctor brings you there. He brings out that knife. He plants you. He cuts it. When you are cutting that thing, it's not sweet. You will cut off that cancer. Want to cut it and you are feeling it. Uh, because if I am looking at your face and your face, uh, because you are crying, and saying, I will say, okay, uh, this cancer, <laughs> because you are crying, you know, uh, let's just leave it. Let's just leave the cancer so that you will stop crying. I must be a very wicked doctor. Cut it off. Don't look at the cries. Let him be crying. That cry will not kill him. Hello. Hello. See, I tell you the truth, I lie not. May God, God will, God will, God hears me. God knows what I'm saying. If I lie not, let God know. Let him do whatever he wants to do. Let me tell you, when you find a man, when you find a friend, that will look at you and tell you the truth. You have found a treasure that nothing in this life can compare with, to it. That young man that is building, that is Bilonia, he's a Bilonia. He's under the rubble, the whole collapse. And they brought him out, he, they didn't, he didn't come out alive. 
<laughs> I was showing them the video about how the pastor was. He didn't tell him the truth. He won't tell him the truth. He didn't. Birds of the same feathers. They flocked him. And we are not ashamed of. And somebody was saying, I think it was John, Pastor John was saying, he will be ashamed. I say, ashamed of what? Shame. Shame. Does a madman know what is shame? Eh? Does a madman know what is shame? Doesn't know. We have gotten to that point. You think he's the first one? You think he's the second one? You think he's the third? He's been going on everywhere. No shame. He has sold. You know, you've gotten to a point where you don't have any shame anymore. Nothing to protect. And they, when you hear them say, when I listen to them, when they say the things they say, eh, when they say, I will call it today, there is one I was listening to. And they are the ones you say you, is your mentor. Is, everyone is your mentor. Keep following them. The day, when the time comes, you will see what will happen to you. He said the name of Jesus Christ is so heavy. The weight of the name of Jesus Christ. You can't be a poor man in order to use it. If you're a poor man, you can't use the name because you need, you need to have, um, you need to have um, the financial, financial might, power, to be able to use the name of Jesus Christ. He's a popular brand. He's everywhere in the whole country and abroad. And some of you have him in your whatever. They are your regular whatever. Continue. Don't stop. That's why your life is twisted. And the Bible says, take heed. What do you hear? You don't go, There is no, you know, he said, in the last day, he said, buy the truth and sell it not. It's scarce. My wife is in UK. He called. <laughs> I don't. I won't bother telling you. I don't bother. I won't bother telling you. If you hear, if you hear the, if you hear what is going on, you will know why the body of Christ is the way. If you see what is going on, even abroad, even in Oyibomans land, they go there. They are using talisman. Church. I don't want to mention the name of the church. I want us to get on our knees. I want us to pray. God have mercy on me. Start with asking God mercy. If you want to kneel down, you kneel down. If you want to stand, you stand. Whichever, don't play game. It's a matter of, if you want to cry your heart out, cry. Tell him to do it, help you. Let's come to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy first. So that we can have access to the grace. Tell him to help you. Kanamaya. Efamanagaya. Somanaya. Esikamanagaya. Komonozibaya. Ezimanaya. Kemanaya. Amanagado Semanaya Gesimana Kabaya Evamanaya Emando Somonogaya Evimana Yevaya Oboga de Mane Sepania Kayabala Blow the trumpet in Zion Sanctify a fast call a solemn assembly gather the people sanctify the congregation assemble the elders gather the children and those that suck the breasts let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet come and near 
Ezemanagadea Samana Yagadaba, Ezumanagadea Patago Zimaya, Gevamana Somanaya, Kozibrani Kamanaya, Ezemanagadabana Somanaya, Ezekapatobana Gada Yemenaya, Kozomonogodo Simana Yagadaya, Evimanagado Samana Yagaya. E kroni mania zabana ya zobodo ko shemeniala e vima nagade yema nagala o gabania managa vinte bana ya e semeni gade ya pato gazibrani kapato samana yega da ya bala ya e managade ya mana somano godo sebana ya bala e femeni amana ya kobaniaza shiama nagaya. Eke baliyama na ko semana gadi ya palaya, aku meniyama na zobrani kapatu zibrani kana yema maya. Ega neyama, simana ya, kazoba, seveniyama, emana gado sete kataliana, goma neyama, soba neyama valaya, efiana soba ne, goma neyama ne se patu kase pati neyagalaya. Sia katia mana galama, ogidi mana gara ye mana galagosa, e pania mana gasa mana gea ya, e zemania mana gada sini mana gana, nemosa havanasa, kumania mana iziba, ibania mana mana katolo ziba na ya, e rima mana gada go se patagaria malaba, roma nogo do se mana ya banama. Vemini gada li gada la gada kato sataya mana. Rima na mana gado sama na gadi ya pala gada ya. Rima na mana gado sama na gadi ya paya na gadi ya sepati ya mana. Aku meni gada sama na kavani ya mana gado sama ni ya mana gada. Ezia mana gala ya. Asapati mana gadi ya mana gado shoma no mano bo. Evi mana gada ya. Esema na gada ya. Yes, Emeaga, Ebania Mana Somonoga, Ezibana Malado Semana Gadayaba, Wemania Sabayaba. I surrender all, Lord. I surrender all, Lord. I surrender, Lord. I surrender my heart, Lord. I surrender my soul. I surrender my body. Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive my weaknesses. Forgive my lies, O oh God. My hypocrisies, my pretenses, my envies, my jealousies, my evil speakings, Lord. Ezema na gada balo sapatadia malagada yana ma. Abana gadia sapania managadosa. Ekume ni gadia palavu sapatia malagada ya. Agadi balana manoko suto bana dia pa ya ba ya. Eve mi ni gada bana kato samana ya gada ya mana ma. Imana managadi shemeni ana gada ya. Heria mana soma nagadi ya pato si baria malagadosa. Eki mana lagada bano soma nogo do semeni ya gada ya. Eva mana mana gada lo kapato si prani kana mana ya mana ya. Ili mana gada bani ya mana gadi semeni ya lagada ya. Hezi mana gada ba vanto ba zubrani ka semana laba laba. Mana gadi ya mana gado sabana mana gadi ya malaya. Eve mini gada ko te bazo prani ka mana ko semani ya mana ya. Mani gada mana gado soma no golono shia na mana ya. Eve mini ya mana gada yeni ka semana ya. Arana gado semana gadi shemeni mana gado semana la gada ya. Hagamane ya mana kavani ya mane semeni ya gala ya. Eva mana semana ya bala. E kama na godo semani ama la gavana mani asama na daya. E kama na somo no gadi shama na yabala. 
I put my faith on the finished work of Calvary, Lord. I put my heart on the finished work of Calvary, Lord. Holy Spirit of my Father. Hemana semena vania semenia galaba Rimana gasoprani gaba sotenia labada Everything in my life that never bring glory to the Father that it be rooted out, O God, of my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Every root of lies, every deception, every dishonesty is Lord. Let them be rooted out of my life like never before. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the Living God. E bamana yaga yaba, e kamane niya samana laga diaba, e famane mana gado samana yaga laya, e mano samana vania mana gaza, e semana laga da bato sapata yende banama laya, aku meni yaba vara naga somana laba naya, e meni gada bala daga so tamani yama laya, aku meni mana vani mana go somma laga diama laya ba. Abani mana mana gado samana lagada ya akroni mano simani ya mana gada ya yemini ya kasi ya malagala no samana lagadi ba evemini ya nama nado kapala ni mana ya esemini ya kali ne mano samana mavara ma ya ogo samani ya malagi ya ba imana gadi esemini ya malai eke mana sora yamani ya mavara da ya. Yane amana, ukomo no mono seme ni amana yaba, abani amana gadi sheni amana yaba, alu amana gadi sheme ni amana galai, akume ni aza, seme ni aza, yomo do sheme ni amana, rima na mando si amana gada ba bandi ba lo, raba la ba ba sheme ni amana la ba ni sheme ni amana la. Rima <speaking in Hebrew> Rabada baba shamana marabada, marababa shamana marabada, rabada baba shamana marabada, marababa shamana marabada, rabada baba shamana marabada, shalabada baba, 
In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. I surrender, I surrender all. Let us sing it. I surrender, oh, surrender all, all to Thee, blessed Savior. I surrender. Purify it like a refiner's fire so that your life will be a vessel of gold prepared and meet for the master's use. My altar, my altar. Is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you. The altar is the altar of your heart, he is crying out to God for a visitation. My altar is calling you. Oh God, my altar is calling you. My altar 
Master is calling my Master is calling me My altar is calling my altar is calling you Oh speak from the heavens and the earth will hear Oh speak from the heavens and the earth will hear Break forth from within me And the earth will hear For my altar is calling you Oh God, my altar is calling you, O oh God, my altar is calling you. A moment of fire, but if you ever had the end, my altar is calling you. My altar is crying out. To you, my altar is calling. My heart is yearning for you, my altar is calling. In my heart, let the sun go. My altar is calling. Let the deep come to the deep At the noise of your water sprouts My waves and my pillows Has gone over me I have no control of myself anymore Oh, my heart is And thy pillows, oh God, my altar is calling you.
Şehide hemen de hayat Hey ya ya Hey ya ya Hey ne evriyan nasıl ki Hey ya ya Hey ya ya Anno ben evriyan sovenayım Emini kemo sotay amama veledien Terbiye ne bin ufisi vele mahamo melediye kobriyan Esi vele mamriyan veledie vele mekayn Oh, hanu ve emi ufisi no levriye mahama Ate vele di chapter 8 verse 13 Romans 8 13 I want you to see something we are still praying if you live after the flesh you say you will die if you live after the flesh if you follow the flesh what are those flesh malice Lies, unforgiveness, stealing, all those works of the flesh. If you follow it, it will lead you to death. You may not have death. When we talk about death, it's a process. There are things. The day somebody dies, when you hear somebody dies, the very day you hear that somebody dies, it's not that day that that person died, actually. It, it, there is something that has been going on, that has been you know, going on until it comes to that point where that person now finally dies. It's, it's, a, it's a process. So he says, if you live in the flesh, you are getting closer and closer to your eternal grave, unknown to you. But he now said that, but if you, through the Spirit, that spirit is the Holy Ghost. That same Holy Ghost that is inside of you. He said, but if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, you will live. In order for you to mortify the deeds of the flesh, what does it mean to mortify? To mortify means to subdue. When you say you have subdued somebody, you have overpowered that person, you have incapacitated that person, you have immobilized that person, he can't do anything anymore. That person is under your control. That is the meaning of the word. Mortify those deeds. Pride. You feel that you know better than the other people and you cannot surrender to people. You can't submit to people. And you know so many things like that. And they are there in your life. You see, if you don't tell yourself the truth, then you are still living in the flesh. He says, so if you through the spirit mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. You can't mortify the deeds. You can't subdue it by yourself. That is why he said, give, give, me, give me Luke chapter 9. Luke 
Give me Luke chapter 9, verse, um, verse 23. And he said to them, If any man will come after me, let him deny who? The word deny yourself is not deny the good things of this time. That's not what he's talking about. And let him take his cross, take up his cross daily and follow me. See this cross. So he says, if you want to mortify the deeds of the flesh, you cannot do it by yourself. You have to set yourself up. It's not by might or by power. Yourself cannot, you can't do. He said deny, forget about yourself. You can't do it on your own. It is by the Spirit of God you are going to do it. And I've told you how to get the Holy Spirit to do it. He said, carry your cross. The cross is where Jesus Christ paid the price for your sin. Hook yourself, get to the cross, or, or recognize what Jesus Christ had done on the cross of Calvary. Look up to that. Look unto Jesus Christ on the cross. Imagine him on the cross, what he did on for you on the cross. When your mind is said that the Holy Spirit goes into action and he begins to walk to give you that strength and all of that, eliminate all those things, and then give you the ability to stay on top of that thing so that that thing will no longer have dominion over you. It's a reality. It can be. Someone who has been inconsistent, unfaithfulness and all of that, it will stop. That is what we need to do. Mortify the deeds of the flesh. What are those deeds of the flesh? What are those things that you've been doing? The deeds of the flesh of the body. In your workplace, the place where you work, they know you for this. Everybody is careful about you. They don't want to get, um, you know, they're on their toes anytime you come around and all that. You are not representing Christ. These are works of the flesh. Because of you, the unbelievers say they won't want to come to you. They won't want to know God. They won't want to serve God. They won't want to give their life to Christ because of you. That's a very big problem. You need to mortify. You need to tell God, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. You said, if I live in the flesh, I will die. And I don't want to die. But if I, through the Holy Spirit, mortify the deeds of the flesh, I will live. Help me, therefore, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to subdue. Paul said, I put my body under. That is under control. I have the power over my body. I control it. It is by the Holy Spirit that he was able to do it. In the same way you can do it, he doesn't have two heads. The problem is that, you see, our major, you see where the major problem is? You will not see that, you will like it, you don't just want to let go. It's your ego, you just don't want to let go. What does it take to forgive somebody? What does it take to forgive? Because you must, that is why somebody does something. He said, he must know the, he must know the gravity of what he did before I forgive him. And who are you? It's the flesh that is talking. Can't you see it? It's the flesh. Let go. Let go quick to forgive. Forgive. How many times will your brother sin against you and you forgive him? He says 70 times 7, 490 times in a day. In other words, just forgive for your sake, for your heart so that you don't grieve the Holy Remember, the Bible says guard your heart with all diligence because from your heart are the issues of life. Issues of life start from your heart. That's where the Holy Ghost is. That's where your heart is controlled. Your life is controlled from. Protect it from every defilement, unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, and all those. You know those things. They defy yourself, your life. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. I want us to pray. Talk to him, talk to him. 
Long suffering, patience towards your wife, patience towards your husband, patience towards your children, patience towards your brother, patience towards your, your sister. Kanamanaya. My God, my Hey, yeah, yeah. hey. 
chapter 12 verse 11 please Romans chapter 12 verse 11 not slothful in business not being slothful in business dragging your feet not being slothful not being indifferent in business not being committed to the business of the kingdom, the business of advancing the cause of the kingdom of God, not taking it lightly, not postponing it, not deferring it, not being cold towards it, rather being fervent, being fervent in the spirit serving God, this is the requirement. God does not want you to serve him with a cold heart. With a heart of lukewarmness. He wants you to be on fire for God. On fire for him. How do you know that you need a fire? When something that is committed into your hand dies or it drags, they tell you to do something, it will take you 100 years to get that thing done. Because your heart is not there. Because your mind is not there. Because you are slothful in doing that. I tell people, if you handle the work, if you handle your business, your personal businesses and all of that, the way you handle the things of God, the work of God, that your business will collapse. The kind of attention that you give to the things of God, the way you give that attention to the things of God, if you do it for your business, that business will come to an end. If the way you serve God is the way you serve in the office, in the place of your work, then that your business, that place of work, they will sack you. Because we have a different mindset and attitude when it comes to God. We are, and we don't know what matters first. Look at these people that are under those rubbles of the building that collapsed. So what's going to happen? Their end has come. The one that has the final say. He decides what will happen. He has the right to call the shots. To keep you alive or to save you. That's why you don't play for. You don't play with God. You don't play with the things of God. You are going to pray now. Father set my heart on fire for you. Revive me again and I shall be revived. Restore me and I shall be restored, Lord. 
The one that can revive you, the one that can restore you is God and God. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, it is not by might or by power, but by my spirit. He said you are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is God that began a good work, not you. And he is faithful and he will perfect it. I can do all things, but it's through Christ. And God is the one that is at work in you to will and to do. It's by the Holy Spirit. He is the one that revives. He is the one that restores. He is the one that quickens. He's the one that will set your heart on fire. He's the one that will steer your heart again. But guess what? The kind of people that he does that to. Give me um, Isaiah 57, 15. Isaiah 57, 15. For thus said the Lord, the high and the lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of what? A contrite and humble spirit. To do what? To revive the spirit of the humble and revive the heart of the contrite ones. If you are contrite in the heart, if you are humble in the heart, he will revive you. He will restore you. He will renew you. He will quicken your mortal bodies again. We're going to ask him, revive me again, Lord. Restore me again, Lord. Renew my heart. Set my heart on fire. Set my heart on fire for you. See, whenever any... See, 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 see. You are in a backsliding state. And most of the time you will not know. When the things of God does not excite you again, when coming to church does not excite you again, when studying the Bible does not excite you, when you are not excited in the place of prayer, you are not excited about fellowship, you are not excited about coming to church and uh, you forsake the assembling of the brethren and all of that, you are already in a backsliding state. In Psalm 122, David said, when I was told, let us go to the house of God. He said, glad. He was joyful, full of joy, excited to be in the presence of God, to be in the assembling of the brethren, forsaking not the assembling of the brethren, as it is in the manner of some. You don't get excited again about God, about the things of God. They say, come for evangelism. You are not excited about evangelism. You are not excited. The joy of the Lord is no longer there. The joy of the Lord, the joy. You're not doing it with joy anymore. You need to be dragging and then they call you on the phone and they do all that and all that. And each, you are backsliding. You are in a backsliding state. You need revival. And until you acknowledge it, until you recognize it. You're going to ask God, revive me. Set my heart on fire, Lord, for you. Kamana yene, semana vaya. Apamana gade, semana ya. Romono, semana yaga. Evamana gada yaga. Hesemaniata, amagade yama. O gabani managa sebania kapatolas. E pamunoza havaniasa. Anything that drives me away from God, let that thing die the dead. Let it not have his life anymore in me. Set me on fire for you. My bones on fire. My heart on fire, Lord. Hakamane abasa. Being fervent in the spirit and serving God. Be on fire and serving the Lord. Be full of joy serving the Lord. Kabane abaya. Somane abaya. Evemini ama. Obana na na ya. Ekamane ama la do samaya. Ekamana na ya abaya. Ogaba la bana na osa. Evreni ama na gade ya. Opote abaya ba. Evemini ama. Ekamene ama. Evemini ya la abaya. I want to live for you. To be spent for you. 
set my heart in the fire. We wanna burn fire. The humble is so Philadelphia. Seven in the kind of Philadelphia. We want to burn for you. We want to live for you. We want to walk with you. We want to walk with you. We want to walk with you.
We don't want to walk like mortal men on earth. Upon every year, so set our hearts on fire. What pet the venom I attain or Hanaman or Samuel? Come up under the Vian every other way out of seven days. We don't want to walk like mere men on earth. When we are meant to walk like gods, I pay mercy by no fear. Sofia, Hanaman, Tanil, 
Exodus 33, let us pray that same prayer that um, Moses prayed for, or was praying, or was asking God. Let's ask God, let's pray that same prayer, Exodus 33 and um, verse 12. This microphone, is it working at all? Is that how it works? Can you hear my voice? Can you hear me very well? Yes, okay. Verse 13. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee that I might find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people, verse 14. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest, 15. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence, verse 16. And for wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not that in, in that thou goest with us, so shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me your glory. Show me your glory. You know, I was, um, I had a pray, um, teaching on um, how to conduct public prayer. In one of the conditions I said was, when you are asking God for anything, when you are asking God, because we're going to pray for your needs, that one, there's no two ways about it, we're going to do that. But the thing is that when you are asking God to give you something, 
you have to tell him why you need that thing. And I said, go check the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Anytime they, anybody, even the prayer, he said, in, for example, with anyone you mention, he said, let us come to the throne of grace. What, why do you come to the throne of grace? So that you may obtain mercy. Why the mercy? You are asking God for mercy. Mercy so that what will happen? So that you can find the grace of God. Without the mercy, you cannot assess God's grace. So I'm asking God to grant me mercy. Why do I have to have mercy on you? Because I need your grace. The grace to help me to do X, Y, Z. Why do you ask God to give you rain? God is saying, ask the Lord of rain in the time of latter rain. And I'll make bright clouds and over showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Why are you asking for the outpouring of the Spirit of God? He said, because the diviners have said lies. They are telling lies, prophesying lies to the people and seeing all kinds of vision and dream that are not founded of God. So let there be an outpouring of the Spirit. Visit us, visit us again that we might hear you direct from, from the source. And then so that your people may live. So David, was, I mean, um, Moses was asking God, he said, show me your glory. I want to see your glory, Lord. I want to see your glory. Show me your glory. I want to go with your presence. The presence of Jesus Christ. The presence of God. is the glory of God. How? Why is he asking for the glory? He said it in verse 16. In verse 16 he says, For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not that in that thou goest with us? So shall, he be, so shall we be separated I and your people. It is your presence. When we have your glory, your presence, it means that we are indeed a peculiar people. The Bible says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people that are called out. Is it by mouth? Prove it, Lord. of miracles. The magician came and did their own. It's not by laying hands and, can, and all those things. That is not it. It is the presence of Jesus Christ. That is, should be what you, that is what makes you different from the rest of the world. When the glory of God rests upon your life, when God's presence is on you, he distinguishes you from the rest of the people. That's how I know that I am separate, I am different. From the rest of the people. Because the presence of God is on me. Because the glory of God is upon me. It is not just by mouth that we are, we are a chosen generation. What do you think? We are a chosen generation. It's not just by singing it. You can sing it for all and get excited and all of that. Yet... Even non believer can sing the same song and sing it better than you. The same Christian song. It is in your presence, Lord. The presence of Jesus Christ. You remember, give me Psalm 63, verse 1. Give me Psalm 63, please, fast. Psalm 63, 1, 2. He said, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul tasted for thee, my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land. Where no water is, verse 2. He said, to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. I want to, this is the kind of prayer that these guys are praying. That is why they are separate. He is the same man in, in Psalm 27 verse 4. He said, one thing do I desire and that will I seek all the days of my life. I want to see the glory of God. This is what makes me separate. Hello. 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 When the presence of God comes upon you, even if you are wearing slippers, even if you are wearing barefoot, oh God. 
That is why he said, why do you spend money on things that don't have value? Spend your time and your money seeking the... When that personality comes upon you, even if you're wearing slippers, they will want to wear that same slippers you're wearing. Even if you are trekking, they want to trek with you. They want to trek. They will drop their car. You say, because you are trekking, we will trek. There is something about... A mortal man, Moses, he said, God, let me see your glory. It will settle all this crisis in my life. Hello, hello, hello. The glory of God cannot be on your life. The presence of God cannot stay on you. And you will be sick. No form of sickness from the crown of your head down to the soul of you. It won't happen. It's a lie. The presence of Jesus is the absence of Satan. The presence of, because they can never cohabit. Light and darkness, they can't come. He said, arise, shine, for your light is come. Light and darkness, they, can't, they cannot cohabit. You know one thing that I, you see, I, I love to tell my, I might, not, I might not have been doing it or I may not have arrived, but one thing that I owe myself is that I must tell myself the truth. It has saved me over the years. That's one thing I learned it early in life. I say, made up my mind. I say, I might be pretending before every other person. One person that I will never pretend to is me. I must tell myself the truth. You know what? I said, sickness, diseases cannot inhabit the body where the presence of Jesus Christ is. Light and darkness, they can't stay in one place. You know what we have here? We have light here. Darkness is not locking anywhere. It, the, uh, the presence of light is the absence of darkness. And then the absence of darkness is the presence of light. They can't stay together. The glory of God in your life will drive away Satan. Any demonic oppression will go. That is why he said in Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. Deliverance that comes by the presence of Jesus. That is why for that glory of God to rest upon you, sin must be done away with. Because sin and the glory of God cannot stay together. And that's why we have been praying, Lord, purge us. Lord, mortify, help us mortify the deeds of the flesh and all of that. And then we have done that now. We are asking God now. We want to see your glory. Pray it, believe it. it will, that glory, hello, that glory is inside of you. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. For, the, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness had done what? Shine where? To give the light of the knowledge of what? The glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It has shined in a, it has shone in your heart. It's there. Verse 7. But we have this treasure. What treasure? This glory. We have it in an 18 vessel. This 18, 18 vessel, this body, this 18 vessel is what is covering it. That's the flesh. Is the flesh that covers it. When you dwell in the flesh, it conceals that glory, you will not see it. But it's there. But when you do away with the flesh, that glory shows up. That's why we are talking about mortifying the deeds of the flesh. Deal with it. And then you see that light, it will shine. 
it will begin to shine in your life. Your beauty, your beauty will come at the, the Bible calls it the beauty of the inward man. It is not about spending money and buying the best cream, the most expensive cream. They have deceived you. They have lied to you. And you are following their lies. I'm not saying that you don't buy. In my, my, my daughter, Olive, was asking me today. He said, where is your cream? I said, see my cream. See the bathroom is open. It's a, it's a Vaseline. He said, what am I doing with Vaseline? I said, I rub it on my body. He talked to my boy. He said, why is my skin and all of that? I said, it's Vaseline that is doing it. Um, anyone that I see, I will take, I will put it on my body and I move on. That's how I entered the bathroom one day, carried one from my wife, rub on my face, my face squeezed. wrinkled like this. I was going, I was wondering what is trying to cover my eyes. Until I couldn't bear it again, I had to come back to the house. I entered the bathroom, pour water inside, foam was coming out of my face. It's not about all those things. The glory of God, the presence of Jesus, when it comes upon a man, you become a celebrity. <laughs> you become a celebrity in the kingdom of God. Men will celebrate you. Okay, okay, wait. Give me Isaiah 60. Bring Isaiah 60 verse 3. Isaiah 63. Or 2, 3. He said, verse 2, verse 2. See the, so you will see the reason why you need to pray this prayer. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and grow darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen. Seen upon you. His glory shall be seen. And I have told you before, there is nothing, no promise of God in the Bible that is automatic. When God has said it, you are going to go in possession of it. You are going to walk it out. Walk it out your salvation. You've got to walk. If you don't walk it out, though it has been said, you will not experience it. And so, he said, and the glory of God shall be seen upon the verse 3. He said, and the Gentiles shall come to what? To your light. And kings to what? The brightness of your rising. They will come. It will pull them. It's not about who you know. Or connection. He on their own. Oh God, ma, yanea, fana, ena. I don't know. We just don't know do this in our Kanea managa zonta, ebiya managa yaba. Oborodi, obodosa, emeni anaya, emeni manaya ya, semeni angala ya, anaga de manaya. E kuberianai, e kurede shapaniama, e femini mana mana gorosa na ya, e meniama la ya, agala na mana mana gora, e mene gada mana gavana mano soto sene ya, e bama na gade a sama ne ya gaya, e bani mana gala ya, e semeni a kaya, e semeni a kaya, u gabala na mani mana gala ya, mana gala bala ya. Rima na mana kada la bala la sosa, e feminia kada feminia kubania sana na yaga, e feminia kala ni a sana na ya, si mana la gadi a sana na la gala ya, e bana mana gadi a mana soma na la gaya, e femini la 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 sote ya na mana ma. I'm 
Calls it the power of the age to come. Is the power of resurrection. Is the power of the age to come. That you will experience it in your life. Because the Bible says the kingdom of God is not just in words, talking. It is in the power and the demonstration of the Spirit of God. We need this in order to function as believers, as a church. Why do you need the power of God? Why do you need the power of the age to come? You know what is the power of the age to come? If it begins to function in your life, that is why you see somebody on the road or somewhere. You just call the person by the name, by his or her name. You have not met the person before. You just call the person, this is who you are. 
this is where you are coming from. This is what happened to you. You tell the person his life history and all of that. The person will open his eyes and mouth and be like, for real? That's the power of the age to come. Somebody, you'll be able to see the problem that is happening in that person's life and you proffer solution to it. Give him the solution and all of that and that thing will be done. You know what? That's what we want. That is the realm where God wants us to operate. Then somebody might now ask, are you, so when it begins to happen in your life, you begin to experience the power of God or the power of the age to come. When you talk about the power of the age to come, he's talking about the gift of the spirit. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirit. You will just come, you will know the spirit behind what somebody is doing. You know that it is of the devil, you know that it is of God. You can see in the, you can discern all this. You can decode mysteries. Things that are too difficult for people to understand and all of that. You will just come, just like somebody will have, will have a dream and is confused about it. And they will bring that dream to you and all of You just dismantle the equation and all of that, give it to them. They are like, wow. So now, but you have to, find, you have to give God the reason why this thing has to be effective. How you, the reason why God will give it to you. We allow it to operate in your life. Do you know what the Bible says in Psalm 110, Psalm 110 verse 3? Psalm 110 verse 3, 110 verse 3. <clears throat> Please, can you go there? He said, thy people shall be what? In the day of war, they will be willing to do what? to come to Christ. They'll be willing to come into the kingdom. They will be willing to serve God. They will be willing to follow him. They will be willing to honor him. They will be willing to glorify his name and all of that. It is by the power of God demonstrated in their life and in their midst. That's why I'm asking God to give me that power, to experience it. Not that when I have it now, then I will now begin to feel that I am more important, that I have arrived, and all of that. Because when you, because that is the reason why you ask God to give it to you. And so when he gives it to you, you use it for the purpose for which God gave it to you, so that you don't misplace it and misuse it. That's why all this, and that's why he's asking you, why do you need this? I need it so that this is his point. And then he will give it to you and watch you see. And watch you to see whether what you ask for, you are being used. It's being used for the purpose for which you ask it. Or you read, 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 read. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse, for, um, verse 23. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues and there come in those that are unlearned, those who don't understand the tongues, <coughs> delivered, will they not say that you are mad because you are speaking in tongues? No interpretation. Okay, verse 24. He said, but if all prophesy and there come in one that believeth not or one unlearned who doesn't know anything about all this, and then he is convinced of all. He is judge of what? All. Verse 25. And thus are the secret of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is with you, and that God is in you of what? A truth. You see now the power that you are demonstrating. Prophecy. You prophesy. That's the gift of prophecy here that is working. You'll be able to tell the person there is a problem and all of that in your life. Or you tell the person uh, this is what is going on in your life and all of that. And then the person just come in and this is what you are telling him because it is a gift of prophecy. You are speaking in the language that he will understand. He will fall down on his face and worship God that you are serving and say of a truth. Your God is real. He will follow you. You see the reason. He said that in the days of your power, the people shall be willing. That is the reason why we are asking this. Is that clear? So that when you begin to function in your life and all of that, it's not for you to display your, your begin to beat your chest, you have arrived, or you are better than you. That is nonsense. That is the flesh. So, if you do that, and then people are going to be coming to you. I, I remember in those days, it was in Abuja, I and my wife, 
we are going on evangelism and all of that. And then these two guys, Muslims that we are going on their way, all of a sudden my wife stopped and called them. I gave them God. He called this one by his name. And the guy got startled. Have I seen you before? Have I known you before? And all of it. He just mentioned, call his name. I've forgotten the... He said, how do you know my name? He said, the Holy Spirit just gave me your name. He said, I hear, I hear you. Okay, there, because there are two. If, you, if it is the Holy Ghost that gave you, if it is God, if this thing is true, then because somebody, somehow, you must have maybe, now tell me the name. Tell me the name of my, my friend, and I will believe you. Guess what? The Holy Spirit told him the name of, told, told her the name of the second person. He mentioned his name, told him what had happened in his life, what, where he's going to, what they are going to do. The guy surrendered and gave their life to Christ. <clears throat> the power of the age to come, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the gift of discerning of spirit, prophecy, inter tongues, and interpretation of tongues, the gift of faith, the gift of walking of miracles. You just be walking along the road and all of that, and you see somebody. Maybe he's a beggar, he's blind. And something ministers to you, you say, take water, give him, tell him to wash his face. And the guy carries the water and washes it. Because if the gift of the Spirit is in operation, he's the one that is there. He will control the person, control every, he will suspend every reasoning and all of that. And the guy will collect the water, wash his face, and the next thing he has will pop open. And when that happened, what do you think will happen around all the people that were there? You become a celebrity overnight. They will be looking for you. That's when you now know that you are going, a uh, um, uh, pastor doesn't have much anointing and power, so let me go and start my own church. And then you go. <laughs> and then you will start your own church. <laughs> you will start your own church. And they will be coming. They will be coming. <laughs> hey, nobody will see you in church again. Maybe six months later, you now send me a text. Pastor, sorry, I forgot to, I have been wanting to come and see you. Something came up. The Lord is doing a new thing in my life. And then you send me the picture of the work you are doing. We will clap for you. It will happen like home video. One year later, you will come back to me. Pastor, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? <laughs> I have seen all sorts. I have heard, I have seen. I have handled. So I have learned. I learned the hardware. You don't need to learn the hardware. I know that some of you, those of you who are lying down, you are groaning in the spirit, I know. <clears throat> they are groaning in the spirit. Say it is well. They are receiving. When they wake up, they will give us. They are in heaven. So don't disturb them. Amen. Let's do two more prayer points. Be strong. Stretch yourself. Spiritual exercise. Stretch. You see this thing. If I wish we could have opportunity to do it back to back to back to back like one, two, three, four, five weeks. Your whole body will, everything will stretch. You know when you take rubber band, you pull it and pull it to a stretching point. You hold it there after a time. When you release it, it will not come back to its original state anymore. You have stretched it. That's what is happening. But your own is that...
I say amen. amen. Some people are not saying amen because they don't like me. First, so I don't know what you are doing. Just come down. If it's communion, share communion. Let's. I will not come down. Amen. amen. Let's ask God for the gift of the power of the age to come. Tell him, Lord, I want to know your power. Because in the days of your power, the people shall be willing. And they will come to the brightness of our rising. And to your glory, they will come. So let us pray. And then we take one more prayer point and then we go to the communion table. <clears throat> that I may know your power. That I may know you. And that I may know the power of your resurrection. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Kanamaneya Sabaya. Evemeni katamana kato samana yagadaya. Evamana gadabano samanaya. Evebrani kataso patone akayaba. O momono godo samania kalayaba. Ebani managadea patosa. Evemini katana managados. Efemia talakayene kaya. Eskibanaya, Kamano, Sono Gadaya, Ibani Katamanio, Somo Nodoya, Yamana Kato, Samana Yabala, Ribada Baba, Shamana Manamana, Inno Bidebala, Samana, Rimana Kato, Samana Yabala, Rimana Mama, Eka Semania, Katalia Mana Zomanaya, Inno Vemana Kato, Zibani Kashamana Lagadia Mano. Evemenia Katano Samana Rimana Gadi Simeniana Gadaya Eremana Samana Lagadi Shimana Lagadaya Evemeni Katamano Samano Kabala Yemana Yana Aramana Gadi Shemenia Lagadaba to go Simana Yana Mamaya Amana Gadi Shemenia Managaya Feminia Naga Somono Gonosiama Abamana Mandigadi Shemenia Lavalaya Akumana Dos Ibaminia Catabania Gosemania Gadayena Feminia Somano Oba Kania Manasa Feminia Tagalaya Zimanaya Abanega Dos Semenia Gariana Manishimania for he is the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Living God. He is the Holy Ghost, the scepter of the King of Kings. He is the Holy Ghost, the seal of the age to come. Bring in everything in obedience to Christ. Transform in everything in obedience to Christ. For He is the Holy Ghost, the seal of the age to come. He is the Holy Ghost, the scepter of the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want to function in the power of the age to come, start this way. Start from the known before you get to the unknown. How do I mean? When you see those who are sick, lay hands on them, pray. When you see somebody that is oppressed of the devil, bind the devil, cast it, command it to leave the person. Have faith, believe it, whether you see the result in that case or not, continue. Nobody is going to call police for you or arrest you. 
Nobody is going to accuse you of anything. Just go ahead and do it. Do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Continue doing it. It won't be long. You begin to see the manifestation of the other side. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you want to see the power of the age to come, start from the unknown. When you read the Bible, you see people, you say, God bless you. Give, them, give the person the word of God. The word of God says. The word of God says. The testimony of Jesus Christ is a spirit of what? Prophecy. So give them the word of God. Share the word of God. It won't be long. This other aspect will start functioning in your life. Start from the known and then walk to the unknown. Is that clear? Ah. My body is so hot. My feet burns. This is the body of Christ. This is the blood of Jesus Christ. I want you to listen. Because of what I'm going to say that will happen. If you genuinely, truly in your heart, hold nothing against any human being on this planet Earth. What did I say? Hold nothing against any man, any woman, whether they are Christian or not Christian, whether they are born again or not born again, whether they have attempted to kill you and you narrowly escaped, whether they have given you poison and you went to the hospital and you finally got healed, whatever it is they have done to you, let it go. Let it go. Hold nothing against your brother, against your sister, against your uncle, against your cousin, against your husband, against your wife, against your children, against your father, against your mother, against your pastor, against your brethren against your hold nothing if you do this and you partake of this you will experience one thing in your life this month of november this month of december one thing you are going to experience things you do not pray for things you do not struggle for things you just thought of in your heart they will just come to pass on his own. It will happen to you this year. Before the 31st of this, of this year, December 2021, you will come to this church, you that I'm talking to, you will come to this place. You will give testimony to this effect in the name of Jesus Christ. He said... In Psalm 133, verse 1, Behold, how beautiful it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In verse 2, he says, It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the bed, even Aaron's bed, that went down to the skirts of his garments. In verse 3, as the dew of Hammon and as the dew that descended upon mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. You will experience this thing in your life this year. I said you will experience this scripture. It will be fulfilled in your life this year. 
You know what is commanded? God will command his bread. You are not the one. He knows what it is that you need. He will send it. He will package it. They will deliver it at your doorstep. He will package it. They will deliver it at your doorstep. I say God will package it. He will send his angels. I say he will package it. Package it. He will send his angels. I don't know what it is. It could be your relationship with your spouse. It could be your business partner. It could be your whatever it is. God will put your life together again. God will restore you. God will show his face shine upon your life. You are going to encounter the grace of God, the goodness of God. You will have it as an encounter this year, 2021, before the death, before the end of this year, 2021, December 31st, you will stand up. Either you stay, you give that testimony where you are, or you come here, the, whatever it is. But I know you have a testimony. I say, I know you have a testimony. I say, I know you have a testimony. In Jesus' precious name. Father, we bless this bread and we bless this cup. This is the very body of Jesus Christ and this is the cup, the blood of the New Testament. I pray, Lord, that as we partake of it, we let go everything that obstructs the flow of your life and your spirit in us. Wash and clean and purge our lives. Bring us together as one very body of Jesus Christ, whom Jesus is the head and we are the body. And this body is made up of members, one another. That we will love one another. We will cherish one another. We appreciate one another. We will have patience towards one another. We will forgive one another for whatever mistake they have made towards us. We receive that grace to live and walk together in love, in unity and in peace in the name of Jesus. Bind us together by this exercise, Lord that will become indeed the disciples of Jesus Christ. He said, by this shall men know that you are my disciples, when you have love for one another. This is our prayer, this is our heart cry, so that your glory and your power will be seen in our midst and in our lives, in our homes, in our marriages, in our families, in our businesses, in our career, in every walks of life, we find ourselves, Lord. You reunite every family. You reunite every marriage, every husband, every wife. Let them return to their family. The Bible says in that last day, I will send the spirit of Elijah and he will come. And then he will turn the heart of the father back to the wife and back to the family and that of the wife back to the husband and the children, and there will be unity and oneness, and then the glory of God will rest upon that home. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory be to your name. Our children will be taught of the Lord. They will not be rebellious. They will be obedient to their parents in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Our children will be, our men shall be like the planting of the Lord that groweth up in their youth, and our women shall be like the pillars that are fashioned after the similitude of the palace, in the name of Jesus. And all of them will be like the planting of the Lord that bringeth forth his fruit in due season. Your trees, your fruit will not, your leaves will not wither, but your tree will bring forth fruit in due season, in the name of Jesus. And anything you put your hand to do, it shall prosper. I say, whatever you lay your hands to do, it shall prosper. God will bless you. God will enrich you. God will showcase his favor and his grace upon your life. He's going to restore your heart. He's going to restore your life. He's going to put you on the right course of destiny that he has designed for each and every one of us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Oh, 